Three days of competition awaited the crews in the 2024 Irish Tarmac Rally Championship as the series headed to the Wilton Recycling Donegal International Rally. Infamous stages such as Nokala and Atlantic Drive lay in wait for a capacity entry. Leading the crews away would be last year's winner Callum Devine and with a last minute change of car he would need to hit the ground running on stage one. Yeah, new machine this year too probably. Yeah. Makes it a wee bit uh, interesting now the more morning, but no, looking forward to it. Um, probably once you get the first one over, it takes the pressure off a bit, doesn't it? Keith Cronin's been on good form so far this season. The 2016 champion knew he just needed a good finish for the championship, but it's been a few years since he was last on these stages. Yeah, of course, we want to be at the sharp end. Um, it's been a while since we've been here, though, so the guys around us have a, a bit better knowledge of, of the stages than us, but... Um, Look, it's a long rally and we'll try and settle into a good fast pace if we can and, and see, where, see where it puts us, um, see from there. Matt Edwards has shown some good pace in the series so far this season and with a second place on last year's Donegal, he was justifiably confident coming into this round. Yeah, I think things seem to go in the right way. Um, we're making a bit of progress event by event, you know, even though we didn't necessarily win Kalani, we, we thought we made some progress and, you know, we've done a bit of testing before this one and, you know, we're always learning about the car and how to get the most out of them. And for me, it's, you know, it's been three years since I've been in a car regularly and just getting back up to the speed of these boys takes some, takes some doing, remembering how brave you've got to be. So with 20 stages ahead of the crews, let's get out there for all of the day one action. Friday would consist of six stages, a loop of three repeated with service in the middle. And by the end of the opening batch, it would be Matt Edwards and David Moynihan that had opened up a small advantage at the top, fastest on all three of those stages. A good selection of tyres carried in the car had helped with the changeable conditions. It had been eight years since Keith Cronin and Mikey Galvin competed on this event, but they weren't letting that stop them from mixing it with the times at the top. They started off a little more ragged than they wanted to be, however with three full days of rallying ahead, they weren't worried about the 2.1 seconds deficit. Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan had had a short test in the new car before the weekend and were confident that it was an improved package. This was the first time one of the new generation Skodas had been seen in competition over here too, and they were understandably taking a few stages to get dialed in and get the car how they wanted, but it was going well with the pair in third place after stage three. Yeah, um, they do a wee bit of work, honestly. Uh, we, we, yeah, it's, it's okay. Probably the gear too, I'm probably just knocking her down the gears and we should be keep it up a bit higher, but not all that we expected, as I say, it's going to take me a day to get on to it. Um, but OK, no dramas, just trying to bear this on, so... It would also be a brand new car this weekend for Karen McCourt and Brian Hoy, but theirs was a newer version of the familiar Ford Fiesta, so it was a much easier transition. They got into a good rhythm through the opening stage, but the tyres were a little too hard for the next, so fourth place for the pair for now, and with service coming up, they could look at that tyre choice before the next loop. A previous winner of the event, Josh Moffat, with Andy Hayes alongside, would have a bit of an issue early on, having to manage an issue with the pop-off valve, which meant keeping the revs up a little more than usual. They got through the opening loop in fifth. Uh, okay, generally it wasn't too bad, um, but the pop-off valve was blown off just a few times, so I was just trying to manage that a bit and keep the revs up, but uh, yeah, with a, a 745.9, so obviously not as quick as the boys ahead of us, like, but... Uh, yeah, it is what it is. David Kelly and Dino Sullivan were finding a lot of bumps and jumps on the stages that hadn't looked as bad on the slow speed recce. They were another pair to gamble on the wrong tyres. And that was the cause of an overshoot on stage two, but apart from that, it was going okay, sixth overall. Marion Evans and Gare Conway had gone the other way with the tyres, opting to take a conservative approach and expect rain. Unfortunately, on stage one, when it was drier, it meant they were on the wrong rubber. But on the next two, it would be a much better run, and so they ended the loop in seventh. It wasn't tyres that were the issue for Declan Boyle and Patrick Walsh, but suspension. They felt it was too hard on the first stage of the loop, but after softening it off for the next, they would feel much more in control. They ended stage three in eighth. Aidan Ray and Niall Burns would also find some of those jumps that didn't look as bad on the recce, having a big impact on one of them. 
but apart from that, things were going OK as they ended the first loop in ninth overall. Things, though, weren't going to plan for Desi Henry and Shane Byrne. They lost time in stage one with a puncture close to the start and then a lack of power on stage two. Sadly, with those issues and the time lost, the pair were forced to retire. Rounding off the top ten were James Ford and Neil Shanks. They were held up a bit by the stricken Henry in the first stage, then suffering an intermittent problem themselves as well, but still going at this point. We would lose Mark Olcorn and Darren O'Brien from the Modifieds in much more dramatic fashion on stage one, when they crashed out early on the opening stage, caught here on FanCam. So, with three stages complete and three more to go on day one, it was a small lead for Edwards over Cronin, with last year's winner Divine 18 seconds back in third. On to the next stages, a repeat of those first three, and the leaders were still Matt Edwards and David Moynihan. They had an overshoot on stage four though, costing them around 10 seconds, and a small trip into a ditch on stage six. But apart from that, there wouldn't be any other dramas, and so the pair extended their lead to 12 seconds. The big news, though, would be the loss of Keith Cronin and Mikey Galvin. It was all going well, the pair setting a fastest time on stage four, and the feeling in the car was good. But an uncharacteristic mistake would see them damage the rear suspension on the Fiesta, and so had to retire on stage five. Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan were getting the setup on the car dialed in a little more as each stage passed. A fastest time on stage five was evidence of that. They felt that the tyre choice could have been better, but at least they were still up there challenging for the lead at the end of day one. Kyle McCourt and Brian Hoy went out on this loop with a cut slick, but the choice definitely should have been wets. They hit a chicane on stage five, but thankfully with only cosmetic damage they were able to continue and moved into third with the loss of Cronin. Things still weren't going to plan for Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes. They had power steering problems on stage four, but thankfully between stages they were able to make repairs and then put in some good times on the next two stages. They ended the day in fourth overall. Marion Evans and Gare Conway were struggling with the changing grip in the stages. This time the tyre choice was correct, but it was still hard to judge the grip. Things were still going to plan though and they lay in fifth place, just three seconds back from Moffat. Things were going a little better for David Kelly and Dino Sullivan. They were still struggling with the tyres a little, but they were feeling much better on this second pass of the stages and ended the day in sixth. With the suspension dialed in and a much better tyre choice for Declan Boyle and Patrick Walsh, this should have been a better loop, but they were having problems with the car cutting out on the last two stages of the day. They would need to have a look at that in service, but for now it would be seventh for the pair. Aidan Ray and Niall Burns would be happy enough with this loop of stages. A tricky loop, but an enjoyable one. They ended the day in eighth. We saw Michael Boyle and Dermot McCafferty move up to ninth place on this loop of stages. They'd suffered with broken suspension on the second stage of the day, and with that sorted, they were able to push to move back up the overall results. Still rounding out the top ten would be James Ford and Neil Shanks. They had an overshoot on the first stage of the loop, getting stuck between the banks, but stage five would be a clean one for the pair, their first clean stage of the day, in fact. A look at the Modifieds, and leading the way there were Declan Gallagher and John McCarthy. They were slowed on stage one by the crash of Mark Olcorn, but other than that it was a trouble-free run. It was taking a while for the tyres to get the heat into them, but they were managing the issue well. Just behind them was the Darien of Kevin Gallagher and Ryan Moore. They were also struggling with the tyres. There didn't seem to be a good choice that suited all of the stages, so it was a case of managing the pace and pushing where they felt they could. A further 32 seconds back at the end of day one were Gary McPhillips and Paul Sheridan. There'd been a point throughout the day where each of the top three crews had been in the lead of the Modifieds. Such was the close competition already this weekend. In the RC4 class, it would be a day one lead for Ryan McHugh and Declan Boyle. That hadn't been the case all day, though. The early stages not feeling great, and a big spin on stage five saw them losing some time. But with everything else happening around them, they were happy to end the day in the lead of the class. The early leaders in the class were Kyle McBride and Dara Mullen. 
They led right up to the last stage when a puncture saw them slip down to second place and allow a charging McHugh to take the lead. It was still close though, only 5.7 seconds the difference. Johan Lloyd and Sean Williams said they were taking it steady, although you wouldn't think it from the times or the driving out there on the stages. They had a clean run through to take third in the class for now. So, with day one complete, the results at the top were all changed as disaster put Cronin out of the event and Edwards extending his lead going into day two. On to day two and the crew's first taste of the famous Nokhala stage. Starting the day where they left off were Matt Edwards and David Moynihan, but it wasn't plain sailing for the pair. They would have a clean run through Nokhala, but almost put the car off the road on stage eight. The incident only lasted a second or two, but they'd knocked the spoiler off the car and debris left behind caused the following crew some disbelief when they realized the leaders had still set the second fastest time. No such dramas for second place Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan. They felt like they were breaking a little too early still, but they were starting to claw back some time on the leaders and ended the morning's loop 13.9 seconds off the top of the leaderboard. Karen McCourt and Brian Hoy were finding it hard to commit in places, and that lack of confidence wasn't helped by a big moment on stage eight. They did enough though to hold on to third place for now. Marion Evans and Gare Conway were pushing, but in places that would see them going wide onto the loose gravel through some of the junctions, and so lose a small amount of time here and there. Overall though, they would be happy with how it was going and ended the morning fourth. Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes had changed a few things on the car overnight, and it was feeling a bit better on day two. They were a little distracted by the marks left by Edwards' moment on stage eight, but apart from that they were enjoying a good run in fifth overall. David Kelly and Dino Sullivan would have a bit of an overshoot on the first stage of the day, the tape hanging from the car telling the story, but they would certainly make up for that in the next stage when they set the fastest time, their first of the event, but surely it wouldn't be their last. Declan Boyle and Patrick Walsh had softened the suspension off from day one, but it hadn't worked as well as they'd hoped, and they'd change it back again in service. They had a good run though, and felt there was still more to give in some of the braking areas. We would though be missing one crew from the results. Aidan Ray and Niall Burns slipped off the road and so slid down the leaderboard. The loss of Aidan Ray meant that a place was gained by Michael Boyle and Dermot McCafferty. They were having a good run and still had more to give in the afternoon as they ended the morning in eighth. We also lost James Ford and Neil Shanks from the results when they retired. The car not making it out of stage nine they'd been having a good run up to that point as well, sadly. After staying out of trouble on day one, Gary Jennings and Rory Kennedy capitalised on some of the issues ahead and moved into the top ten themselves. They ended the morning in ninth, but they did have a bit of an issue when they had to push a bail out of their way on a chicane that had been hit by James Ford ahead of them. Rounding out the top ten overall now would be our leading modified crew, and it was all changed there again, with Kevin Gallagher and Ryan Moore taking the lead once again with an advantage of 12 seconds. But it could have been more if it hadn't been for this spin on the last junction on stage seven. That meant it was no longer the modified lead for Declan Gallagher and John McCarthy. They were having problems with the tyres starting to go off by the end of the stages, but they were managing to hold on to second place at least. With stage 10 completed, there hadn't been any changes to the overall podium places, but the pressure was starting to get to the crews as we crossed over into the second half of the event. On to the second section of the day, and a different loop of stages awaited the crews, but just as they'd been doing all weekend, it was still Matt Edwards and David Moynihan that would lead the way as the second day of competition came to a close. They had a bit of a moment on a jump on stage 11, but apart from that, it was a clean afternoon. Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan had a lucky escape on stage 11. The pair were caught out and had a high-speed spin, 
but thankfully there was only cosmetic damage to the car and after a short while they'd get it going in the right direction again and completed the loop still in second place but the gap to the lead was a few seconds bigger now there would be a change in third. Marion Evans and Gare Conway would take that place now, but they weren't without their dramas too, with a big moment on the same jump that caught out Edwards. But for the rest of the afternoon, they played it safe and got through in one piece. Karen McCourt and Brian Hoy were struggling to get into these stages. That and a spin and stall in stage 14 would be what dropped them out of the last of the podium positions and into fourth place overall. David Kelly and Dino Sullivan were still going well. They were backing off a little for some of the bad sections, but that was a sensible approach to finishing a rally of this length and not ending up in a ditch. Fifth place for the pair at this point. The feeling in the car still wasn't great for Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes, but that wasn't reflected in the times. They were actually going well, but it didn't feel like it was flowing inside the car. Either way, sixth place to end the second day was a good position to be in. Declan Boyle and Patrick Walsh were another crew, like many others, who had a moment at the end of stage 11. They would note that section and back off a little the next time over it, ending the day in seventh. There'd be bad luck for Michael Boyle and Dermot McCafferty. After a good run up until now, they picked up a puncture on stage 12, dropping them out of the top 10, but it certainly wasn't over for the pair just yet. Gary Jennings and Rory Kennedy were keeping things tidy and going in the right direction. They would end the second day in eighth place overall, but were realistically a little too far back to get any higher on day three. It was all changed once again in the modifieds. Declan Gallagher and John McCarthy were still going well and moved back into the lead of the category. A spin on stage 14 wasn't enough to keep them from that top spot for now. It was still close though, and after two days of competition, there would just be a single second in it, with Kevin Gallagher and Ryan Moore dropping down into second place once again. They had a moment on the bad bump at the end of stage 11, but got away with it to round off the top 10 overall as well. Third of the modified crews would now be Gary McPhillips and Paul Sheridan. They'd been having some issues with the steering on day two, but things were getting better as the day went on. They might be too far back from those crews fighting it out for the lead, but they'd keep pushing regardless. A wrong tyre choice on day one had set David Bogey and John Rowan back a little further than they would have liked in the times, but they were slowly working their way back up the results and would end day two in fourth. And in fifth place in the modifieds, it would be Connor Harvey and Eamon Doherty. They were also leading the way in class 13 as well, and were around 25 seconds back from Bogey on the modified leaderboard. In the RC4 class, Ryan McHugh and Declan Boyle were still holding on to the lead. They were managing things well and keeping everyone behind them with a good advantage as day two drew to a close. Keelan Grogan and Ayrton Sherlock had a big moment on day one and it had set them back on the times a little, but now they were playing catch up and moving the right way on the times up to second in the RC4 class now. Unfortunately, we'd lost Johan Lloyd and Sean Williams from the class early on day two, the pair ending their event on the first stage of the day, in fact. Kyle McBride and Dara Mullen also weren't having the best of luck. They'd slipped down the results on day one due to that puncture, but on day two, it would be a misfire causing them some problems. Still, third place in the class, and only 1.9 seconds from Brogan was a good place to be going into day three. Fourth place in the RC4 class would be Matthew Boyle and Gary Byrne, a little way back from the podium placed crews at this stage, but still going well in the Peugeot. And in fifth place were Casey J. Coleman and Lorcan Moore. They were happy enough with how things were going, and with only five seconds to boil up ahead in the class, they would be up for a charge on the final day. Day two was also the start of the event for the historic crews, and in the lead of those crews would be Michael McDade and Declan Casey. After eight stages, the pair had a 16.4 second advantage at the top. Second of the historic crews were Tommy O'Connell and Paul Hughes. The escort pairing had settled into that spot from the start and were managing to hold their own to keep up with the leaders. Marion Evans and Anthony O'Sullivan ended the opening day for the historics in third. They made a small mistake on some gravel at a hairpin and it lost them a few seconds as they tried to get the grip back 
but it wasn't enough for it to affect their position regardless. 33 seconds back would be the next of the visiting Welsh crews, Thomas and Eirik Davis, historic winners on previous rounds so far. They were sitting in fourth place for now and with a job on their hands to try and get closer to a podium finish. There'd be a lucky escape for the fifth placed historic crew. John O'Donnell and Aidan Friel were caught out on this corner and spun the BMW, just getting it caught in the ditch enough to mean they needed some assistance to get back out. They lost a little time, but were able to claw that back over the final few stages of the day. So, with day two complete, the fight for the top was still close and could still go either way. And with a challenging day three ahead of them, it was all set to be an exciting finish to the Donegal Rally. Day three, the final day of competition, and rally leaders Matt Edwards and David Moynihan would start the day off defending that lead from the charging crews behind. But unfortunately, disaster would strike on the second stage of the day. They got this corner wrong and were lucky not to roll the car after the impact with the wall. Co-driver Moynihan thought it was game over, but Edwards pushed through to the end of the stage to assess the damage and continue. However, they were now down in fourth place, with victory now out of the question. Left and three right fast, is it? No, it's done, Matt. Okay, no, keep going. Just I don't know where we are. Okay, okay square right, we're on the bail. Yeah. Left and a three right fast. So that handed the number one spot to Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan. They'd been pulling a few seconds a stage out of Edwards in the lead up to this, and it was set to be a close finish. They wouldn't want to take the lead in this way, but of course this is rallying and nothing is certain. Indeed, the pair would have their own moment when they clipped a bail quite hard on the very same stage. For Marion Evans and Gare Conway, their move up to third was now a move up to second. They were still pushing hard, and in fact stage 17 would see them posting the fastest overall time. With just 37 seconds to the lead, they'd have to use sensible heads over the final stages and decide if they risk pushing or play it safe for second. But the drama wasn't over for this event. We'd next lose Kyle McCourt and Brian Hoy. They crashed out of the rally on stage 15. The crew were OK, but it was the end of the event for the pair, who'd been hovering around the podium places all weekend. David Kelly and Dino Sullivan had slowed briefly for Khan in stage 15, and their day wasn't without drama either when they slid off the road on the final corner of the stage. Luckily, the damage was just cosmetic, and with everything going on around them, the pair were now in a podium position. Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes were still having a good run. They looked to be settled in now, but with only 9.6 seconds to Edwards up ahead, it could all change, depending on whether Edwards could get back out for the final loop after service. Declan Boyle and Patrick Walsh came into day three with a setup that was too hard. They weren't getting the heat into the tyres, and it was causing the front to lock up at times. Certainly not ideal, but they were still going well in sixth. After a good clean run so far, Gary Jennings and Rory Kennedy would be one of the latest to take some bodywork off the car, clipping a bail in one of the stages, but thankfully it was only a tap, and the pair didn't lose any time or places, and they ended the penultimate leg in seventh. A big lock-up into the first chicane of the day would set the tone for Michael Boyle and Dermot McCafferty, just causing them to put a bit of caution into the rest of the morning, but they would still be lying in eighth place for now. The modified battle wouldn't change on this loop. Declan Gallagher and John McCarthy continued to hold on to the lead, but there was nothing more they could do, pushing the tyres to the limits, and they lay ninth in the overall standings as well. The shake-up in the Modifieds would come for second place when we lost Kevin Gallagher and Ryan Moore after they stopped in stage 17 with mechanical problems. They didn't retire, however, just lose a few minutes and drop back from that fight at the top. So, there was still plenty of drama in this penultimate leg of the Donegal Rally. A new leader, a rush to get cars ready for the final stages and a damage limitation final loop for Edwards. On then to those final stages here at the Donegal Rally. And before we take a look at the overall results, let's round up the various class and category results. Day three would see the junior crews joining in the action, and it would be a close event, only just over a minute separating the top five at the finish. And in that fifth place were Dylan Baskin and Ryan Moore. 
Just ahead of them were Patrick Doherty and Dylan Boyce. They'd been moving around the results all day, up as high as joint second at one point, but they slipped down to fourth in the afternoon. Jason Tees and Jordan Green were another pair moving around the results, but for them it would all be in the right direction, starting the day off in sixth and eventually taking a third place finish. Ronan Dorian and Mickey Joe Brown started off in the lead by going fastest on the opening stage, but sadly they dropped down the results and eventually had to settle for second. So that meant that taking the junior rally win were Jason Wilkinson and Kieran McGinley, snatching the lead on stage two and holding on to it for the rest of the day. In the historics, it was all change. Hugh McQuaid and Martin Byrne moved the right way up the results to take fifth place by the finish of the event. Ray Breen and Damian Morrissey did the same. They came back from a little lost time on day one to move up the leaderboard and into a fourth place finish in the historics in the legacy. Thomas and Eric Davis had a slightly better day too and moved their way up a place to end the event in third. Not the win they would have wanted, but still a good result for the pair. After their day one spin and getting stuck in the BMW, it was a much cleaner run on day two for John O'Donnell and Adrian Friel. They climbed up as high as second place to take the runner-up spot this weekend. There was change at the top too, with day one leaders Michael McDade and Declan Casey ending up super rallying on day two and dropping down from the top of the results. So that meant it would be a delighted Marion Evans and Anthony O'Sullivan who secured victory in the Donegal Historic Rally this weekend. A quick look then at some of the class winners that don't feature in our overall results. And in class 22, the win went to Martin O'Donnell and John Wallace with a huge advantage of over four minutes. Alan Brown and Mickey Donnellan had a good run to take the class 20 win, remaining unchallenged by the end of the event. Things were a little closer in class 15, but for Jim McDowell and Shona Hale, it would still be a five minute advantage at the top of the class at the finish. The Class 12 battle was seriously close, with Adrian Cannon and Ivor Hernan being the crew to take the win, but there would only be 1.4 seconds in it over second place Vincent Collins. In the 11R class, it would be victory for Anthony Hand and David McCrudden, taking the win by just over two and a half minutes in the escort. And it would be a similar lead at the finish in the 11F class as well, Gavin Russell and Daniel Callahan taking the top spot in the class in the Civic. Edward and Ellie Cogan had an unchallenged run to a class victory. They were the only ones in the class to finish without Super Rally, so the class 10 win was theirs. And it was a similar story for Jason Mooney and Dara Bonner, the only crew to finish with a clean run in class 9 to take that win. In the RC3 class, it was victory for Brendan Comiskey and Arthur Kierans. They stayed out of trouble to take the win by just over three and a half minutes at the finish. In the RC4 class, there wasn't much of a change over the final stages. Casey J. Coleman and Lorcan Moore were close to fighting to move up another place, but too hard a tyre would prevent them from pushing as hard as they could, so fifth place in the class would be theirs. That meant that fourth place was safe for Matthew Boyle and Gary Byrne. They managed to hold off any charge from behind them and took the class result at the finish. There would, though, be a change as we moved to the podium results. Unfortunately for Keelan Grogan and Ayrton Sherlock, their earlier second place was now third. It was close though, the entire podium was separated by only 36 seconds. Kyle McBride and Dara Mullen managed to get themselves back up the order on the last day. Not quite into the lead, but second place was still a terrific result and they had to be happy with that given their issues throughout the event. But taking the win, another to add to the tally for the season, were Ryan McHugh and Declan Boyle. They reached the finish after two hours and 31 minutes of competitive driving. Victorious at the end by just 17 seconds after a great battle in this highly competitive class all weekend. On to the modified and overall results. And in fifth place in the modifieds were Connor Harvey and Eamon Doherty. They remained in that place and kept hold of the Class 13 lead too. But their day wasn't without incident, clipping a bail on one of the earlier stages on the final day. David Bogie and John Rowan had come into day three with some gearbox issues in the earlier stages. They got it sorted in service though and headed back out for a good run to the finish, taking fourth in the modifieds. 
David Moffat and Martin Connolly had a great run on day three, moving up a few places on the results to end the day with third in the modifieds and 14th overall. Gary McPhillips and Paul Sheridan were just getting through now. A close call earlier in the day showed just how easy it could be to throw it all away. They managed their pace and got to the finish to secure that second place. And for the modified leaders, Declan Gallagher and John McCarthy, it would eventually be the win. They kept hold of that place throughout the day to spray the champagne back in Letterkenny. A great end to what had been a tough event. The milk man spraying the champagne. Yeah. I thought it slipped away again. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately for Kevin, it is trouble. But uh, with a clean sheet going on this morning and... Uh, Kevin just blew us away in the first two stages, but unfortunately for him, he had his problems, and uh, I thought it was gone on us too, to be honest. Back to the overall leaderboard, and there was a place gained for Gary Jennings and Rory Kennedy. They took seventh place to end their event, and being in a right-hand drive fiesta meant they also took the class win. Sadly, we would lose Declan Boyle and Patrick Walsh from the top of the results. Electrical issues saw them stop in stage for a few minutes, and so dropped right down the order. That left it up to Michael Boyle and Dermot McCafferty to uphold family honours. They had a good run through the final day to end the event in sixth overall. Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes would overshoot the last junction on the penultimate stage, luckily only costing them a few seconds, but that did mean there was no more challenging for fourth place, and fifth would be the result they took away from the weekend. For Matt Edwards and David Moynihan, it was all about damage limitation. The team back in service had got the car sorted and back out again for the final loop, and the pair were at least able to come away with fourth place. A spin on the last corner of stage 18 cost them a little time, but probably didn't change the overall result. In one of the drives of the rally, the final step on the podium went to David Kelly and Dino Sullivan. They went from setting their first fastest time to claiming a number of them throughout the weekend. Their overall times were impressive, and the pair ended the event just 26 seconds off the lead. Just ahead of Kelly on the results were Marion Evans and Gare Conway, really getting to grips with the Yaris by now and giving the car its best results so far this season as well. 17 seconds off the leaders by the finish. Which meant that after an action-packed weekend and with their own fair share of dramas, Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan were able to make it another win on the Donegal Rally. A spin in the same place that caught out Edwards also cost them a few seconds, but apart from that it was a good final day, and the pair will be returning with the number one on the door once again next year. So, as our coverage of the 2024 Wilton Recycling Donegal Rally draws to a close, Let's take a quick look at how those final overall results were decided. What's the feeling like coming down the road in the car? Because you had a bit of a truck now coming from Fanda down here today. What was going through your head? Oh, I'm just, I'm just very happy that it actually paid off and we got the one. Obviously, we changed the car <laughs> very last minute, so we did. And we says, right, let me see if we can make this work, obviously. And, uh, yeah, big thanks to all these boys, the team hey, it's uh, given a lot of work to do um, so late on to try and make this happen and uh, get the result obviously. It was a bold move to do that, to change the car? Yeah, it was a bold move, um, like, was nothing wrong with the pole, like we won our last rally in the pole, so yeah, it was a bold move, but absolutely delighted it paid off for me. <laughs> Next up for the crews in the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship is the Modern Tyres Ulster Rally. A sprint by comparison, but no less of a challenge. We'll be there to bring you all of the action, so we'll see you in a few weeks' time in Newry. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.